Hi everyone, welcome back. So, the other day I was watching a documentary on Nan Madol, and it is a bit weird because I haven't thought of that place in a long time, but I remember I did watch documentaries about it when I was a kid, and I was always equally intrigued as well as disappointed that most of it was underwater and we just never know. So in this documentary I saw on National Geographic, they actually did a LiDAR scan of the whole island to map out so much of the city that we weren't able to see before. It got me to thinking about the other lost cities in the Pacific Ocean, which I find to be particularly interesting just because of how remote they are, like literally thousands and thousands of miles from the next human inhabitants. Of all the various stages in ancient human migration, tackling something as colossal as the Pacific Ocean is easily the most challenging. And of course, there's a question of why any of these people even chose to leave their homelands to head into the vast expanses of the open ocean. In this video, we'll take a look at some of the most intriguing, lost megalithic civilizations of Micronesia and the Pacific Ocean. This strange city is found in Micronesia and is made up of a series of over a hundred artificial islands connected by canals. The city is actually built in a lagoon on top of a coral reef surrounded by water on three sides. The architecture of the site is considered a marvel of ancient engineering, consisting of large pillars of basalt stacked in a crisscross fashion without the use of any mortar or cement. These stones are actually quite similar to the ones seen at various sites like Gunung Padang. While some of the stones are light enough to be carried by one person, others weigh well over 50 metric tons. According to legend, the city was constructed by two sorcerers with the help of levitating stones and a flying dragon. Considering that stones of this type are only found 40 kilometers away, it remains a mystery how the site was built. Nanmadol has no fresh water or food, both of which need to be received by boat from other islands. The earliest human activity dates to around 200 BC, although the main site of Nanmadol as we know it was constructed in roughly 1500 AD. 500 kilometers east of Nan Madol, Lelu Island is yet another ancient ruin to be found in the Federated States of Micronesia. Historical accounts by European explorers describe the city as an extensive network of canals and compounds constructed of huge boulders and basalt pillars. As with Nan Madol, the stones were quarried from the opposite side of the island. Whether they were transported by land or sea or how they were erected remains unknown. Coral was also used extensively in the construction of the city. The city comprises of housing, temples, tombs, and other sacred spaces. Traveling to the western end of Micronesia, across a distance of 2,200 kilometers of ocean, we find the island of Yap. On this island, there are over 6,000 stone disks ranging in size and weight. The disks were an important symbol of wealth, status, and power. The stones were used as money, and their value increased based on craftsmanship or history. The smallest measures just 3.5 centimeters across, while the largest ones stand 3.6 meters high and weigh over 4 metric tons. The rocks were carved over 400 kilometers from the island of Yap, and were at the time the largest objects to be moved across the Pacific Ocean. Sometimes referred to as the Samoan Pyramid, this mound is the largest ancient structure in the Samoan Islands. Like many of the other structures we've seen in this video so far, this pyramid is constructed of basalt pillars and stands 12 meters high. The structure consists of three levels with slightly sloping walls. During a survey in 1978, archaeologists recorded more than 3,000 other features in the area, including stone platforms, fences, pathways, and ovens. The pyramid dates to roughly 1,100 AD. This is the most ancient megalithic site in Palau, dating to around 150 AD. The site consists of over 50 basalt megaliths, some weighing well over 5 tons. The stones include six humongous heads, as well as the remains of what is believed to have been a large meeting house. Other notable structures include a large stone sarcophagus which is located on top of a small hill. Another interesting thing that we find on this island is the quarry that was used to construct the Yap stone money. These money discs were then transported 400 kilometers across the Pacific Ocean by canoe. The House of Taga is found on Tinian Island, which is part of the Northern Marianas Islands. 
This unique megalithic construction consists of a collection of stone pillars roughly four and a half meters in height. Each of the pillars is topped with a semi-spherical stone, and although there are roughly 15 of these standing stones, currently all but one have fallen. It's believed that these pillars were used as a support for houses to keep the inhabitants safe from flooding and wildlife. I guess you can't quite go through the megalithic sites of the Pacific Ocean without mentioning the famed Easter Island heads, which, as we now know, also have bodies under the ground. This volcanic island is an unlikely settlement, isolated over 3,700 kilometers from the mainland of South America and 1,700 kilometers from the nearest inhabited island. Scattered across Easter Island are over 900 moai, which are the giant heads that Easter Island is famous for. The island is said to have been settled by Polynesians around 400 AD until the civilization met its eventual demise around 1860. Those are seven megalithic ruins that we can find across the Pacific Ocean. Which ones have you heard of or not heard of before? If there are any others that you think should be included, feel free to let me know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Thanks for watching and see you next time.